Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Hope you're having an amazing day. If you're new here, welcome. Today we're gonna talk about when people make you wait. We've all experienced this. We've actually all probably made other people wait, but nothing pisses me off more than scheduling a meeting with somebody, whether it's a date, whether it's an office meeting, a conference, whatever it is, and you have to wait for somebody. What do you do about it? This is all part of office politics, part of dating, kind of just part of life. Humans are humans. Things happen. Are you sure they're making you wait because it was actually a mistake or is it a power move? You don't really know, but in either scenario, you have to remember a couple takeaways. They're wasting your time. Your time is valuable. Your time is precious, just like theirs. And so when somebody makes you wait, you don't address it, depending on the scenario, you're signaling to them that they're higher value than you. How many times do you want to date? I've certainly done this before, a long time ago. You know, I'm supposed to meet a girl and seven o'clock, meet me here. I meet at seven. She rolls in at like fucking 7.20, 7.30, and I'm sitting there like a douchebag waiting. That's only happened a few times, but I do remember the very first time it happened, I was freshly divorced, I was excited to meet new people, excited to meet this girl, and she's been in the game a little bit longer than me, she was divorced for a few years, so she has experience in dating, and she made me wait, said, oh, I'm sorry I was late, da blah, 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 whatever the fuck she said, and I immediately said, oh, it's okay, no problem. Well, even then I was like, fuck, no, it's not okay. Why did I say it's okay? And I'm thinking this thing, like, why is it okay? What the fuck? Well, of course I wanted to get laid. So, I mean, obviously that, that goes without saying. The point of this is you want something from them. And so you'll obfuscate typically and say, oh no, it's okay. Because you're thinking they're higher value than you are. So in that scenario, I was placing her quasi on a pedestal thinking, oh fuck, I just want to get laid. What are you, right, you want to be late? That's cool, you know, whatever. I started changing my thinking and said, well, no, it's not okay. Quite frankly, we dated for a little bit and she was always late. And what I did is I was setting the tone early on that her lateness, her tardiness was actually a party, uh, power move and that I was okay with it. Relationship didn't work out, blah, 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 blah. But the point is when somebody makes you wait and you don't address it and you say things like, hey, it's okay, or I understand, and you kind of downplay it, you're agreeing to those terms. You're in a sense agreeing that their time is more valuable than yours. So what do you do about it? Obviously, when it comes to dating, when it comes to workplace politics, maybe you're the CEO, maybe you're a boss, there's a, round, there's a few principles that kind of work for everything. And you gotta understand what situation you're in. So I wanna kinda of go over some of the principles of how to A, nip it in the bud if it is a coworker who's chronically late, or maybe you just start dating this girl and she's late, or you know, maybe it's a boss and he's late. There's different scenarios for this, but I wanna get, give you guys a few takeaways, a few things that you can do, because what you're looking for in all situations and all relationships are win-win dynamics. And so if they are playing a power move, you wanna nip that in the bud. You wanna kinda of balance out that power and let them know that it is not okay to waste my time. So the very first thing, obviously, you wanna prevent it as best you can. We're gonna use dating in this scenario because this happens a lot for guys. Um, women are usually late. Most women are never on time. And I'm not saying it's a power move. I'm saying sometimes, you know, maybe they have kids and they're waiting for the babysitter. They fucking put on all this goddamn makeup and all this shit. Sometimes they are late, but you wanna try to prevent it as much as you can. So what I suggest in these scenarios, specific to dating is if you ask a girl out, you want to pick a spot closer to your house. 
pick a spot that's convenient for you, not convenient typically for her. You want to do some investment here. And you always actually, the, the morning of this date or whatever it is, you want to confirm. And when you confirm it, it sort of puts them in a box where they can't office, obfuscate later and say, oh my God, it, it, they can't really be careless about it because you confirmed earlier with them, hey, seven o'clock at this bar, was just confirming it. Yeah, great, yeah, I'll meet you there. And the second thing you wanna do is have a plan B because if she is late, you don't wanna sit there and people around can feel like, okay, this dude's waiting for a date and this person hasn't shown up. I see it a lot when I'm kinda of out having a couple of drinks, I'll be talking to a guy and he's supposed to be meeting a girl at six and fucking she doesn't show up either. She either doesn't show up or she shows up at like 6.30. So it kind of makes you feel needy if you have nothing else to do and you're just waiting around. So have a plan B. I always say, bring your iPad, um, get your earbuds in, listen to a podcast, maybe on your phone. If you can do some emails, like keep your time busy so that you're not just wasting time waiting around for this person. So stay busy, have a plan B. You don't look kind of needy, don't look pathetic. Be busy during that time. Now, what happens if they're late? What do you do at this point? Well, I start without them. In all scenarios, if I'm doing a business meeting and fucking Greg is supposed to be there at eight for the meeting, I'm not waiting for Greg, okay? I'm going to start my meeting at eight o'clock because everybody else got there at eight o'clock to participate in this meeting. Same scenario with the date. If I'm supposed to meet this girl at seven o'clock for dinner and she's not there at 7, 7, I'm gonna order a drink and probably order something to eat because I'm still gonna get some food. I'm not gonna sit there waiting around for her. I'm still gonna eat, I'm fucking hungry. So start without them. If you do these things and you're, you're, all, you're already in the mode of sending a clear message that your time is valuable. You're not waiting around for people. If you're not in those scenarios, you kind of have to wait for this person. Maybe it's a CEO, you pre prepared a meeting and uh, you're supposed to present to him. Obviously there's a social dynamic there and there's a hierarchy there. I mean, you might not be able to start without him, but what you can do is get on your laptop. You can read a book, you can make a call you can kind of be busy in that quiet time so it doesn't feel like you're just wasting time waiting on this person. Now again, all situations are different. Again, if it's somebody who is of higher authority than you, it could be a boss, your supervisor, somebody like that, and you sort of have to wait for them, well, then keep yourself busy. But if it's a date and she's late Certainly get a drink, order some food, fuck, talk to somebody else. It doesn't have to be a girl, but just talk to somebody else. And so if she does come in, you're not bothered. You're like, oh shit, I met Tim, blah, blah, blah. You have a good question. Maybe it is another girl. Hey, this is Beth. Beth, this is my date who's fucking late. Sarah, just kidding guys. But keep yourself busy. Keep yourself entertained. Don't let it bother you that she's late, your boss is late, because then that sort of gives them the power. It suggests that their time is more valuable than yours. And so by you working, by you emailing, by you on the phone, all these things lets them know, okay, I'm just not bothered by you, you know, okay, we'll start when, you know, we start. If you are on your laptop or you are on your phone kind of killing some of that time and they walk in, don't just stop your conversation. Continue your conversation for a minute or two. Don't jump up to greet them. Let them speak first. Again, we are looking for win-win relationships. Even if it's a boss, you still want a win-win relationship. If it's a new girl you met, you still want a win-win relationship. When it comes to personal friends and family, a little bit different because they're probably not doing a power move on you, but you still should let them speak first 
And again, if you are on your phone or reading, finish what you're doing before you acknowledge them. A really cool power move is if you're on the phone and say it's a boss or a coworker comes in, don't greet them, but shake their hand while you're on the phone. This is a fucking psyop. So let's them know that who I'm on the phone with now is more important than our meeting. Okay, again, you're just throwing a little jab back at him. Like, look at dude, you're making me wait. Now I'm gonna make you wait until I finish this call because this call is more important than you right now. So it is a, a little power move, but you're trying to balance that power back. So anything that you do to let them know that your time is just as valuable as theirs will help balance out that power dynamic. But with all these things, you haven't really addressed the issue yet. And you definitely do want to address the issue because if you don't address the issue, you don't really get compliance from them that what they did was wrong. So you are looking for an apology. You don't want it to be a repeatable offense. So you definitely want to address the issue. If it's somebody close to you or a colleague, meaning you guys are pretty much equal in the hierarchy of your business, you want to be very direct with them and say something like, hey Tom, you know, I've been waiting 15 minutes. My time is just as valuable as yours. I don't appreciate waiting. Let them apologize. Let them say, I'm so sorry, my car didn't start. Whatever excuse they're going to give you, as long as they apologize, then just move on from there, okay? But you want to give them the opportunity to apologize. If they don't apologize, if they come in with the attitude like, I'm higher than you, that's a different story. And that works to be, again, if it's a boss or a mentor or somebody that you actually need something from, you have to understand that, okay, yes, he made me late or, or he's making me wait or she's making me wait, but I need something more from them. So you have to tread lightly on that. Anytime you need something more from another person, they're already in a higher dynamic. And by them making you wait, well, again, whether it was an innocent mistake or a power move, you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt because maybe there's a mentor. I've had mentors that made me wait all the time, um, but I'm getting more knowledge from them than the amount of time I had to wait for them. Make sense? So if it's somebody of a higher social caliber than you, somebody who has a higher status than you and you need something from them, you don't want to be direct with them. You can say stuff like, hey Tim, man, I was getting worried, everything okay? It's a slight jab of like, you let them know you're late. Or did something happen? Like, uh, you know, did I get here too early? What happened? Like you're letting them know, hey fucker, you're late but then it opens the door for them to use the excuse to apologize but you're not being confrontational so if it's a family member a close colleague you want to be a little bit more direct because they're the same they're the same status as you and you want that win-win relationship if it's a boss or a mentor you want to be a little bit more subtle about it but you want to nudge them into an apology without that confrontation. I've been in a situation where the delay was very significant, like a half an hour, and I'm getting to the point where I'm about to text this guy, like, fuck, like, did he forget? We made plans, I confirmed him, what the fuck? It was very significant, but he did come in, he apologized, and he offered to pay uh, for this lunch meeting that we had. So if they offered to pay you, pay for the meeting or they pay for the lunch, pay for the dinner, whatever, it does show good gesture. It does show that they value your time. Something just came up. So you don't have to accept it. You can say, no, 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 you know, I, I got my meal, don't, you know, things come up, whatever. 
But you, they did offer to pay, they did apologize, so you did confront the issue, and now you wanna kinda drop it. You wanna just move on, because again, you're still looking for that win-win relationship. You don't wanna hold a grudge, you don't wanna be that guy who, you know, is all salty, and like, eh, hey, he fucking late again. Just like, hey dude, you know, half an hour. The other thing you can do is, if your meeting is planned for an hour, and they're 15 or 20 minutes late. Another really good move to do is leave 15 or 20 minutes early and say something like, hey Tom, I have another prior engagement that I must attend to. It's too bad we didn't have the full amount of time. Maybe we can do this again. That lets them know and it balances it back out that they arrive late, you leave early. So these are all things you gotta kinda of understand and figure out where the dynamic is. I'd even offer to do this with a mentor or a boss because maybe you do have a prior engagement and you don't wanna make them late. Well, it is a way to kinda, of, even with your boss, to say, hey dude, I know you're my boss and I respect you, but you're not gonna make me late for another engagement. Maybe it's a business call that's gonna help the boss, whatever. If it's a girl, I have done this a couple times where she's late and then I want to set that tone back because she gave a half-ass apology and most women think pretty is a pass. It's not. I would get a drink, relax, have, have a conversation with her, but then I cut the date short and then I take that power back. So you want to do everything you can to keep that balance in there. Nobody's time is more valuable than yours so understand that. So really quick, let's just recap the main points of this. The best way to prevent somebody from being late is early prevention. Confirm the date and time and the place. Once they say yes, it's really hard for them to be late. It's really hard for them to be flaky. Have that backup plan. So again, you confirm the date, bring something with you, a book, an ebook, an ear pods, your phone so you can you know, maybe do some emails, stay busy during that dead space. Start without them if you can, if it's a boss, if it's somebody who actually has to be there. Get your laptop out, get on the phone, stay productive. But if you can start without them, start without them. Let them backtrack, let them try to figure out what they're missing. You can do that after the meeting, a one-on-one, -on -one, say, yeah, well, because you were late, this is what we talked about. Address the issue subtly or directly, depending on the, the situation. Consider the overall pattern of the relationship. This is what I'm gonna touch on really quick. If it's a girl that you're dating who's chronically late and she doesn't really offer up many apologies or it's always the same excuse, just this, just that, just this, and she's not respecting your time, you probably need to cut her loose. If it is a friend who is consistently ghosting you, you guys make plans and they're always ghosting you, they're not your friends, you wanna cut relationships off. It's not a win-win relationship. You're not, you're, you're the giver, they're the taker in that relationship. So consider cutting those relationships off. If it's a relationship you have to maintain, again, you, you want to try, if it's a boss, if it's something like somebody like that, you want to reiterate to them that your time is very, very valuable and you want to set strong boundaries on that so that it doesn't keep happening again. However you handle all these situations is always going to set the tone for further interactions. Back to the first girl I started dating, chronically late because I set the tone early on that it was okay that she's late. Quick story on that, got much better at dating, got into power dynamics, got into all this stuff, so I understand relationships a lot more. If a girl was 15, 20 minutes late, I leave. I know it's a dick move, but I leave, but it signals to her that your time is no more valuable than mine. I'm bouncing, I get the fuck out of there. And then this has happened. She's like, hey, I'm here, 
where are you at? I'm like, hey, dude, our, our meeting was seven or our, our date was seven. You never called. You never explained. I bounced. If they really want to see you, they'll make plans. And then I push it a little bit further. I'm like, cool, this time you're paying. And most of the time that works because they really want to see you. Some of them actually will do a power move. And if you check them on that power move, it'll never happen again. That's all I got on this one. My throat's a little course today so I do apologize. My name is Jared. This is Magnetic Men's Club. If you found videos like this helpful, you know what to do. Consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. And leave me a comment. Let me know if I missed out on anything. Let me know if how you handled when somebody was late. Maybe you have a better trick or a better uh, feedback on it. Love to hear your comments. With that, have an amazing day and we'll talk soon. Thanks.